Hello guys, in this video we're going to take a look at the following formats of the UI table rows. So in order to do that we got to first prepare our dashboard. So we're going to define a tab and a group. The tab name is going to be dashboard. Let's first specify our table. So we're going to insert a table and we are going to assign it to our dashboard table. Let's deploy that and check in our dashboard how it looks like. All right, you can see here that we've got an empty table here. The first format that we are going to take a look at is the image format. So we're going to start by defining our column. Let's click add here. The property name is going to be image that's needed for later. Title can be whatever you want. I'm going to use image here. The alignment, we're going to leave it at left and the format will set to image. As you can see here, the image has to be a source URL of an image. So for this example, I just copied the URL of my YouTube logo. You can use whatever image you want here. Okay, so we need some data for our table, so we're going to start with an inject node and a function node. Connect those up. In here, we need to define our data. So we're going to set our msg.payload equal to an array of JSON objects. So as you saw before, the property of our column needs to be image. So we're going to set our key to image. And now the value is just going to be a string containing a URL to an image. So here you can see that's the URL to my selected image. And we can see how that works now. So let's deploy that, inject our data and have a look at the tail. So we've got our image here, but as you can see, it is way too big for our table. So we're going to adjust the layout of our table. Here you can see our table. We're going to increase the width to like maybe 10. And by clicking on the lock here, you can resize the height of the table. So let's use 4 for the moment. If we deploy that, we can now see that our table is bigger, but the image is still way too big. Now, in order to make the image smaller, we have to use a template node, so the UI template node. If you want more information about the template node, you can check out the videos that I made before on the template node. So in here, we make, need to make sure that the template type is a widget in group and the group is the same as our table. And in here, we're going to define a style tag. This allows us to write CSS, which is going to style the image. First, let's select the tabulator cell. Now we want every image in our cells to be affected by our CSS. So we have to select all the images that are in our tabulator cell. Now we can specify our CSS. So we're just going to set the height of the image. And this should adjust our image to be way smaller. So deploy that, inject that. Now we can see that our image is way smaller. Now we can also set the alignment to center. This will move the image to the center of the column right here. So now let's duplicate our object, so we have a little bit more data to work with. And now we can see that we have two cells, both containing the same image. Let's move on to the progress format. The progress format shows a progress bar and it is scaled from a value from 0 to 100 that you have to inject as an integer. So we are going to define a new column. It's just going to be and the title is going to be progress. The alignment is left and the format is going to be progress. Here you can see that the range of the progress is 0 to 100. Now we need to set new data for the progress. We can do that in our function here. So we're going to need a new row. We're going to name it the same as a property, so prop. And here we're just going to use a random value between 0 and 100. So we use the math.random function, 
this gives us a number between 0 and 1. And by multiplying it by 100, we make sure that it's a value between 0 and 100. And we got an error here, which says that we need to set the comma right back here to make sure that it's two different key value pairs in our JSON object. So we do the same for the next object. This should give us two progress bars with different values. Let's try it out. So here you can see that we have two progress bars with different values. And if we inject it again, you can see that those values change. The next format is going to be the traffic format. The traffic format is, as the name suggests, working like a traffic light. So we can add our column. We're going to name it traffic here. Title traffic. Alignment, let's leave it on the left. And the format is going to be a traffic. Now, the traffic displays three different colors, and they are red, amber, and green, and they depend on the ranges of numbers that you can see down here below. So, same as in the progress bar, we need to give it a number between 0 and 100. That means that we can copy this complete line here and just change our key value. Same down here. We now have one traffic light that's green and one that is red. In order to see that this is working, we are going to give our timestamp a repeat of, let's say, two seconds, so we can see how it's actually changing. All right, now we can see that both the progress and the traffic light are changing every two seconds. So one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that you can also rearrange those columns. You can easily do that in the table configuration. You can just move them by drag and drop, just like this. And now what you will see after an inject is that the traffic and the progress have changed places. So we're going to move that back. So now we have the initial state, same as before. So now we're going to move on to the color. The color is pretty easy to understand, it just displays a color. And the color code needs to either be a HTML color name or a hexadecimal value. So we set our property to color, net title to color, format is going to be color. Now an HTML color name is just a name. Now we can see that we have our colors here. So let's say we want to use a hex value as color. We're just going to use the node red, red. So that's just going to be, instead of the name here, we're going to use a hex value. The one that we want is 8F0000. We can see our classic node red right here. The next format is going to be the tick cross. And the tick cross is just going to show a tick or a cross depending on the boolean value that we give it. So true value is going to be a tick and the false value is going to be a cross. We can easily define that by giving it a key tick and set it to true. Same down here, but just going to set it to false. All right. Now we can see that we have a tick and a cross. Now the second loss format is the stars format. This is just showing a star or a star rating between 0 and 5. We are going to define it here. Let's say four. Now, one thing that's important to note at the star is that it won't round the numbers. So if we set it here to 4.9, you would expect it to display five, but that's not the case. So we would have to 
round the values beforehand. You could do that by setting the math.round around that. That should display five stars on our table. Exactly. Now, the last format is the one that doesn't need any additional data and it is just the row number. This just displays the current number of our row. And there you have it. The only problem now is that our column names aren't properly displayed. We can fix that by just making the size of our table bigger. Let's use 20 here just to make sure that everything fits nicely. Okay, 